All right, guys, this is going to be a lesson on how to build a Gen 3 bench top stand along tuning harness. This is an OBD2 connector as well as a blue PCM connector. These can be found in any kind of wrecking yard, pick and pull, etc., for pretty much dirt cheap. This is how you're going to end up tuning your LS1 computer from your bench top. So you just take your old harness, see I cut off the car right there. Just unravel it, expose the wires. With the wires exposed, you now go for the top of the PCM connector, or the back side. Take a small screwdriver, but they're squeeze clips that come up pretty easy. There's a set of six total, so be patient with it. They're fragile and the tabs tend to break. Okay, with the tabs off, we can now focus on the pin release. The two blue plastic end caps right there. Stick something sharp in there just to prime release the blue tabs from the EC holder itself. Be a screwdriver, flathead, small pin, paper clip. Each side pops off, be patient. Okay, I got one side of connector out the way. Now on to the next. Once these blue caps come off, you'll be able to remove the pins one by one. With the blue caps off, you take a set of vice grips or needle nose pliers and remove the pin one by one. Every single one. See, I'm down here to the last pin, which is removed free and clear. It's kind of dirty outside, so I'm going to clean it up before I reinstall the pins. Okay, to get this thing up and running, all we need is four wires. It's going to be a uh, two positive, serial, and a ground. 1920, 58, and pin number one. Start off with pin number one, the ground pin. Just push it in from the back until it clicks. First click, and you're done. Pin 19s and 20 are gonna be your power wires. So just before, insert those from the back, first click. Last is going to be your serial wire or communications. And that has the ECU to talk to your HP tuner unit. It's going to be pin number 58. Slide it in. First click. You're done. Ah, it slid in too far. If it goes in too far, don't worry guys. All you do is pull it back out and reinsert from the back side. Okay, we fixed it, there we go. Okay, once all four wires are installed, install your blue caps back over the unit. Left and right side the same, so don't worry about orientation. Snap, snap. I didn't want to bore you guys with how to strip wires. I pre-stripped the LBD2 connector as well as the ECU harness plug. So they're all prepped and ready to go. Of the harness plug, there are five wires here. You only need four. 
the brown wire, which is the far right bottom wire, is not needed. So you can leave it there or cut it. I just cut mine. Keeps it simple and clean. You have two grounds. You have one power. And you have your communications. Okay, of the harness connector, you take the two power wires, which are 19 and 20, and you twist those together. The power wires are gonna make with the power wire on the LBD2 connector, which is the orange wire. Just twist those together. You can solder them later, shrink wrap them, which I usually do. But for illustration purposes, I'm just gonna connect them, show you where they go. Same thing with the ground. Pin number one of the plug goes to the black wire of the OBD2 plug. It's nice and tight. Solder it, shrink wrap it, or heat shrink it, the correct term I should say. That's it. Last one is the communications wire, which is the purple or green wire from the plug, which is pin number 58, and the bottom one of the OBT connector. That part is done. Now your problem is, or solution is, providing power to it, whether it be a standalone method of a 12 volt battery, or if you use a 12 volt laptop plug, and use the connectors and terminals from that to power your unit from a household outlet. For the standalone battery method, you take one lead, the positive terminals to the positive of the terminal here, and connect the negative terminal to the negative of the unit. This other method is the laptop or the 12 volt, uh, 120 volt laptop plug, or any plug you find around the house is 12 volts. Connect terminals also, this will work. Took one lead to positive, other than ground. If you need to use a multimeter to test the polarity, make sure it's correct. Other than that, it's simple and done. Take your connector. Ah, wrong way. I have to flip it over. There you go. Connect to blue. Secure, tighten that bolt right there. Take the OBD2 plug into your HP tuner unit or any other kind of uh, scanning device, whatever you hook up to, whatever you need it for, and your household plug. Tune away. Enjoy.